a Philips um, GU10 240 volt 2 watt LED lamp. Now, the reason I bought this, it was quite expensive ish compared to typical Chinese crap, but the reason I bought this was because I thought, you know, Philips normally make quite nice lamps. Um, and I wanted to see basically what the circuitry was inside and how it compared to um, the Chinese style GU10 equivalent fixtures. So the front is glued on. But that's no great issue because um, uh, I took one to bits earlier. So we've got this plastic lens in the front. Underneath that, we've got an aluminium plate under which is glued with a heat sink compound. Is it glued or is it? No, no, actually it wasn't glued. That's just loose heat sink compound. Um, and it was physically screwed into the fitting via screws that went through the circuit board and then sandwiched that onto the aluminium plate. Now this isn't an aluminium core circuit board, but it does have a copper fill in the back to help um, har harvest the heat and provide a good mating surface for the thermal conduction onto the heat sink. The LEDs themselves, there are four LEDs wired in series, but it's more than that because the voltage measured across the LEDs is roughly about 12 volts. And that probably means there's actually four chips in each package. Now, I did light one dimly with an external power source and resistor, and then I looked at it through a microscope, but I couldn't differentiate, because of the phosphor diffusing it, I couldn't differentiate between the individual chips inside. I will say, is it that silicony stuff? It's that slightly, slightly silicony feeling stuff inside it. Um, the power supply, is mounted behind the board and it sort of goes through like that. And I thought this was going to be a switch mode power supply in this. And I was surprised, almost slightly disappointed that it was a capacitive dropper with quite high value capacitors. Capacitive droppers to me shouldn't really be used above a certain level. But having said that, you know, I guess this is actually okay as a design. Um, I'll show you uh, the schematic for this and go over it because I've doodled it. Here we are. So, <coughs> the interesting things, a 10 ohm resistor um, at the input, which is probably more of a fuse than anything else. Um, then two capacitors in parallel, these two red ones, and these are rated 470 nanofarad and 180 nanofarad, giving a total of 650 nanofarads. And the reason for that, I'll, I'll explain that the reason they added them up in two different values like that later. There's um, six surface mount resistors in the back and a, a surface mount rectifier. And the resistors are all clumped in pairs. So these two are in series, two, 600, two 680 kilo ohm resistors as discharge resistors across those capacitors. So that when you unplug the light, they, it takes a charge off the capacitor and you can't get a nip off the pins. Bridge rectifier. Uh, then a capacitor in the output, uh, 100, mic 100 volt, 33 microfarad. Now, what's hard about this is it's got this little rubber cap in it. And I wonder if this has anything to do with the fact that if the capacitor, if the LEDs failed uh, and went open circuit, the full mains voltage would more or less build up across the, um, the capacitor and that would exceed its voltage rate by three times. And it might pop, I guess. I don't know, actually. I really don't know what this little rubber cap's for. Um, but anyway, after that, two more surface mount resistors in the back in series, two 56 ohm resistors, giving about 28 ohm equivalent, uh, feeding the LEDs. And I've shown four LEDs here, but effectively, because each one is uh, four LEDs in itself, there's 16 LEDs. And then two uh, more surface mount resistors, 200K, across that, res that capacitor there, so that when it's powered down, it discharges the capacitor and also makes the lights, the LEDs, instead of them going dim and then fading away slowly, it decisively makes them extinguish. Um, <clears throat> that'll also probably help the, with the issue that occasionally, when you've got capacitive leakage and wiring, mains wiring, some of the la LED lamps are so sensitive that they glow very dimly in the dark. So that'll probably help with um, preventing that. So. There's one other thing, one other component, and it's really odd. It's a 470, I'm guessing, micro Henry. I don't know if it's micro or millihenry. I don't have a meter here that can actually test that. 
Um, but it's this little, I originally thought this was just an inrush limiting resistor, uh, but it's um, it's a standard choke in this form, in the same style of packaging resistor. Uh, yellow, violet, brown, so 470, I'm guessing, microfarads. And my guess is that that's really to prevent transients and spikes from being coupled through to the LEDs or damaging the circuitry. Um, maybe also to suppress a very low level, the small amount of noise you'd get through the LEDs, um, well, not so much LEDs, but the uh, bridge rectifier turning on on each half cycle. I, I'm not 100% sure about that. It's, I guess maybe suppression is the only way you can really sum it up. Now, I've done the maths. Um, now, let me know if you get bored now. You don't have to watch the rest because um, it is mathematical. I'll keep this really short though. So using the formula xc equals 1 over 2 pi fc, 2 times pi times 50 hertz times 650 nanofarad gave an equivalent resistance value, uh, capacitive reactance, of 4,900 ohms. Uh, 240 volts minus about 50 volts across all the LEDs gives 190 volts to drop. And based on uh, that, um, the current through the circuit will be 190 volts to drop divided by the equivalent resistance of the capacitive circuit equals 39 milliamps. The LED power, then, is the 50 volt LED total times 39 milliamps comes to roughly 1.95 watt, which, given that the LED lamp is rated 2 watts, is actually really close. And they've fine-tuned the power effectively of the lamp by the choice of these capacitors. If you used lower power capacitors, they'd uh, effectively use the less current would flow through LEDs, they'd be less power dissipated. But to get fairly accurately the two watts, they've just combined these two specific values, the uh, 470 nanofarad and the 180 nanofarad to give the 650 nanofarad. So, you know what? I kind of like it. It's um, the lamp doesn't get too hot in use like some of the other ones do because it is only two watts. So it's actually not a bad uh, LED lamp at all. It's quite neat.